joined by Paul Cope for one of the odder segments I'll do all year. I'll come on to why it's odd in the in a minute or two. I want to start though with with you discussing the book you've written, Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, just for our listeners, the book you've written is called The Seven Secrets to Change Your Career. So, firstly, tell me about the book, and then I'll explain why it's odd. It is odd. Yeah, you know, I'm intrigued to see why you think it's odd. It's very odd for me. Um, so, there's a long back story. The, the short story is I. I actually, I went on a course and they were talking about on the course how we've all got knowledge inside our heads that's valuable to other people. And as I was sitting there, I was thinking, well, the one thing I've got that's extremely valuable possibly to other people is what I've done over the past few years, which you have, I was thinking about this earlier on, you've you've witnessed this firsthand. This is why it's odd. Yeah. So for people who don't know, I've gone from being a corporate lawyer working, well, first first of all, working for big corporate law firms and then setting up my own company. So I was working 100 hours a week, ridiculous days, stressed out my mind, and just completely transformed it and changed it. So now, now I work 20 hours a month, possibly. I was actually t- I was telling someone about it a few weeks ago, and I said, it's incredible, really. I've gone from 100 hours a week to 20 hours a week. And they were like, God, that's good, isn't it? And then I was like, oh, no, sorry, I mean 20 hours a month, <laughs> which is just, even even saying it now sounds incredible. It doesn't, doesn't really make any sense. But um, the book is about that, so... It's about my story of how I did it, and then it's a guide, effectively, of exercises that you can go through that shows you how to do the same thing if you would like. And the reason why this is odd is I've sort of, in part, as your friend, lived this journey with you a little bit, and that's why it's quite strange. Like I feel as though I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm a character within the book. I'm obviously not, but there's been like this. It's it's quite strange to have the idea that someone's telling a specific story that you've also witnessed as it's gone through, and you. And mm-hmm. this is, it's not an exaggeration to say that when you had your own firm, you were employing a number of people yeah. and you were feeling no more or less successful than at any other part of your life. It's important to say more or less. It wasn't like it was one or the other, mm-hmm. but the big issue wasn't, a, it wasn't a question of success. It wasn't a question of how you measure that success. It was simply a question of your own personal enjoyment of, yeah. your, of your life. Yeah, very much so. And it, it's interesting actually, because even for, I, I'm intrigued to see when friends and family read the book, the first chapter is all about my story, basically. And there's loads in it that most people won't know, even friends and family, sort of dark stuff about how how miserable I was and unhappy I was. Because in general life, we all put on a brave face to the outside world, don't we? That's part of what we do. Um, so even I remember having conversations with, with you and others just at times and sort of just telling little snippets of things yeah. and, and people's faces being a bit like, oh, wow, didn't didn't know it was that bad. But yeah, it was... I suppose I'd fallen into a trap that lots of people do, especially in, in careers like being a lawyer or an accountant or whatever, where it's just sort of par for the course. You're just expected to be like that. And I, and I I mean, I've always looked at the world a little bit differently, and I was sort of sitting there thinking, There's gotta, it's got to be more than this for the rest of my life. Because it was, it was, you know, it was, it can be quite a soul-destroying job to do. And when you've got that much stress and you're working those hours, you, you can get to a point where you're like, well, what's the point in any of this? You can make money, but money ultimately doesn't really do anything for you if you're, if you're miserable. So, When you when you look to, to escape that as part of that journey, was one of the most difficult things almost taking it step by step? Because it's important, again, for listeners to know that you took it step by step. Mm-hmm. You didn't, for instance, not go to work one day and shut the law firm. You didn't do that. Yeah. You didn't decide that you weren't going to take on any other ventures in fact you've set two or three up in the last couple of years yeah it wasn't the idea and i think it's really important for listeners to know that it wasn't the idea that you just basically closed the door on the world and went that's that or even did the other thing i know you're going to do a little bit of this very soon but you didn't decide i'm just going to go travel and i'm going to drop out that's not what the journey is really that's not what the book's about no and i think that's really important there's a there's a part of the book about this i i think people one of the things that stops people changing when they're in unhappy jobs especially but anything in your life where things aren't going well is this idea that you've got to like take a leap of faith you've you've just got to close your eyes and hope for the best and and see what happens and that's petrifying the idea of that is petrifying to me as well and it you just don't have to do that at all it's it is and that's what the book's about it's about the step by step it's about how do you analyze your current life how do you figure out what it is you're not happy about and how do you figure out most importantly because that this is an interesting bit. I had a coach when I was running the law firm, and he gave me the example once of people getting divorced. And he said the problem with people getting divorced is they only focus on what they don't like about their current partner. What they don't do is think, but what do I want? What do I actually want in the future? Yeah. And it's a good analogy for the for careers and this book because there's at the end of the book is all about that. It's all well and good saying I'm not happy doing what I do now. 
but identifying what you want to do and what makes you happy is a really important part and that's the thing you can do step by step as well is that where i know you've 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 gone to a lot of a lot of seminars you've gone to a lot of sessions you haven't just decided to write this book based upon absolutely nothing i know you've done you've been doing loads of work on this i'd say for about two years the book you haven't been writing it for two years Mm -hmm. but i'd say you've been probably preparing it for two years it's been in your mind this journey is that one of your sort of things you're trying to avoid the idea that there's there's there is a sort of a one size fits all here's a list of things that you've definitely got to do instead it can be that you know the it's my it could, for some people it could just be mild changes that you think some people might be perfectly fine let's be, be quite clear yeah other people who read the book may may conclude that there's just there's just simple straightforward small changes they may feel as though they need to make to be happier are you trying to put that over rather than the idea that it has to be a dramatic 100 hour a week to 20 hours a month shift yeah 100 percent. something i i mean i i love sort of the self-help type industry as much as the the names it gets aren't always the best but generally sort of self develop self development improving your life improving your your mindset things like that but something i don't like about a lot of that industry is it, it's very definitive it's like do this this and this and you'll be happy and my big thing about all of us we're all individuals you've got you've got to do what's what's right for you and i stress that in the book that it's about not this isn't about my story is my story but everybody else's story is specific to them i was i was talking to someone recently about sort of the mental health question mm. slash and i think it can be applied to the personal development question is i think there's too we we, we collectively focus too much on either ends of, of, of the spectrum yeah that either when things are really really bad or when people have what you can in inverted commas call an elite sort of mentality and then we try to draw back from that yeah. and i think there's not much and someone was saying this to me and it, it struck me as a really profound point that we have entire industries built mm. around physical fitness around people who are in the middle yeah. Like we literally have literally gymnasia that exist that I'm meant to go to in order to, to, to feel better. But not no one thinks I'm going to go there and I'm going to become, you know, an Olympic rower. Yeah. No one thinks that's going to happen. Yeah. Do you think that we need to, you know, so, and this is something, again, something you're trying to do with the book is say to people, listen, this isn't a, you know, this isn't, this isn't about a cataclysmic shift in your mindset where suddenly before you know where you are, you'll be, you know, <laughs> you'll be, you'll be a winner. It's not that, is it? That's not what you're trying to say. You're just trying to say, think better, not think perfectly. Oh yeah, well, one of, one of the big sections in the book is about perfectionism, and I, I was raised a perfectionist and was a perfectionist for years, and now I'm a reformed perfectionist. So I'm like a I'm like a smoker who has stopped and is now like a warlord. You know, my my dad was one of these people, smoked for years, then stopped, and was just horrendous to be around anyone who smokes. I'm a bit like that with perfectionism now. I just think it's I think it's a disease. It's ridiculous perfectionism it will just make you unhappy the idea of this and there's an exercise in the book for this because i like to measure i think we it, we talk about lots of these things in fluffy terms and that's i think that's why society turns to black and white it turns to good or bad are you fit or not fit are you happy or not happy when actually everything's on a scale so i very early on in the book i, I put a test in to say where are you on the scale because you might be six out of ten happy with your job but you want to be eight out of ten well, you can read the book and figure out how to get from six to eight. You might be zero out of 10. You might be absolutely miserable and depressed and you want to get to a six. And when you talked before about the progression, when I look back over the past, I, I sold my law firm in 2015. So it's sort of three, three and a half years yep. to go from there to where I am now. And it was a step-by-step progress of making some errors and figuring stuff out. And you're not finished now. I think that's the really interesting thing. You know, I, I, I know about three different things that you're working on. People can see them on your Twitter and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. You've had stumble, stumbles around them. And that, again, is in the book. And that's, again, part of sort of who you are. You've talked a lot whilst we've been doing the football stuff. You talk a lot about things not working, yeah. which I always think is fascinating. Nothing's, nothing's failing or nothing's... Uh, the, the idea that you were, you know, when we've talked even about the most basic sort of football thing, mm. sometimes you, someone's trying something and it's expl- explaining the attempt as much as sort of... It, not explaining the success of the attempt and that again is a, a different way at times to sort of look at life when people are determined just to sort of draw a line down the middle and go this is the su- these are the successful things these are the unsuccessful things do less of them do more of them yeah well it's interesting actually because for, for all the people who've listened to me talking to you about footy for, for so long now when they, if they read this book they'll probably get more of an insight as to why i think about football the way i do because it's, it's all very much the same thing and the society we live in the culture we live in is weird i think for this we're obsessed by success but i mean the weird thing is we, we seem to be obsessed by everyone should be successful but when they are we don't like it but also that means we don't we don't like to talk about failure at all whereas i always say to people who i I work with a lot of companies i work with a lot of individuals now i always say to them failure is the only thing we are we all have in common 
everybody fails. Everybody. No matter who you want to talk about, it could be the best football manager in the world. Guardiola fails. I, I always remember saying last year, look, look at Luka Modric as a tiny example. He finishes the Champions League final as a winner. And a couple of months later, he's standing on the pitch as the loser of a World Cup final. So what does society say about him? Winner or loser, good or bad? Not that straightforward. It, it's as simple as that. So, yeah, it's all about it. I mean, that's cliche. It's all about the journey and not the destination and all of that sort of stuff. But it's true. So, yeah, it's all about, and as you say, I'll, I'll never stop. This is, I'll, I'll, there's a great quote I love about, if you ask Eric Clapton what he does for a living, he says he's learning how to play the guitar. I quite like that. Indeed. Um, how do people get hold of the book? online so it's on amazon um if you want to go to the website you can get to it from there so go to changeyourcareer.org and you can see everything you need to see from there and the audiobook as well audiobook as well yeah i've just finished recording it with your with your help in these studios so that was a fascinating experience in itself it, it, do you know what it was <laughs> you've, you've almost got an audiobook you can do about your audiobook or at least a little five minute maybe you should do like a little five minute code about everything you learn doing that absolutely well it, it's hilarious as well because i listen to so many audiobooks i was i was actually on the train on the way in listening to bits of the, my recordings to think what do i need to redo or whatever and i was sitting there listening to myself on the train thinking Someone somewhere in the world, even if one person downloads this, will be sitting listening to me for four hours. And that in itself is such a surreal thought. You, you, you want to walk in these shoes, mate? Anyway, <laughs> uh, it is fantastic. It is Paul Cope's book. Do check it out. It is called The Seven Secrets to Change Your Career, changeyourcareer.org, to get to everything that you need, and it will be available on Audible and all the obvious places as well.